So in this video, I interview Eric Patrick Thomas. Really awesome story. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up and let's get into the interview. Yo, yo, what's up guys, what's going on? We have Eric Patrick Thomas, AKA Mr. Inspire. What's going on, brother? What's up? What's going on? What's up? What's up? How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Happy Taco Tuesday. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> I get hey. excited, man. Hey, uh, first and foremost, man, I just want to tell you thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to do this for everyone and do this for me too, personally, because I actually, I learned from this too, as I'm interviewing. I'm very open-minded, by the way, too, as well, Eric. Like when I, when, when you say something, like I might, you might see me come over here and write something down real fast on the side because I'm listening to you and paying attention to everything that you're talking about because there's an opportunity for me to learn something new, by the way. So hopefully I'll be able to see that pen, right? <laughs> I'm going to say something. You're going to be like, okay, I got to jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure, man. So um, let's get into it, man. Let's, uh, let's talk about your story. Tell us, like, tell us your story. Tell us the background, brother. Background, not to get like too far into it, but um, growing up as a child, I always was involved with like, I love wordplay, like Dr. Yeah. Seuss, Mother Goose. So when hip hop came out, I mean, I'm 43. So when hip hop oh. came out, I started writing hip hop music. Like when you know when uh, L O Cool J, Beastie yeah. Boys, Run D M C. So okay. I always kind of like followed hip hop, and it was basically like based on my lyrics were based on like influence or what I was seeing or my maturity level. So yeah. you might like at any given day in our neighborhood, you'll see us like at rap battles and then wrestling battles, or maybe you know like like that's where it goes. It went from rap to W W F at one time, and <laughs> and then um so it just kind of carried with me all the way from middle school to high school. And then um, I wasn't going to go to college, but my uh, teacher in uh, this like tech, this boat school that I went to, when I was in high school, it was photography and graphic design. I ended up just going to college for photography because mm -hmm. I didn't know you could go to college like for something like that. Like I, mm -hmm. I thought he was just like, you know, kidding me. Like mm -hmm. go to school for photography. Are you serious? So I ended up signing up for the photography program. Still doing music. My my roommate Ryan graduates from Flint Northern. We both get a house together on the north side of Lansing, and then we just we take photography school together. At the mm -hmm. same time, I'm working at Myers. It's like a a retail grip, uh, grocery store yeah. chain um, in the mid, mid Middle East. And then uh, we uh, we just start doing our music. We found a studio, and then um, we ran into a person at a nightclub. And we went to an after party and we saw him do freestyle rap. And we were like, we got to do a song with him. And yeah. his name was Big Perm. Later on, we found out. We said, hey, let's collaborate. Let's do a, let's do a track together. Yeah. And so he came over and he checked us out. He said, okay, I'll do a track with you guys. So we set up studio time. We we're only supposed to do a song. And we went to the studio and we came out three songs later. And then we became a group. Like when we came home, it was just like, what do we want to call ourselves? I opened up to you the dictionary. Well, the thesaurus, and I pointed to one word, and it said miscellaneous. And I said, that, that's us. You know, that's us. It's white, black, and, and Hispanic. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, that was, that's who it was. So we became yeah. miscellaneous. We didn't want to put ourselves in a box. We wanted to be able to do whatever we could do, yeah. a variety of different things. Like the branding, really. You know, it was, yeah. our, it was our brand. And so here it is. It's September 20th of 97, and we are celebrating our music project. And we have it at our house, with the house that we live at. And I'm inside and I go outside to check the parking lot just to make sure everything's good, you know, and calm and stuff. Making sure nobody's like in my neighbor's yard and stuff. And yeah. I come back to the house and I'm facing the house uh, almost to go up the steps. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was out there like for five minutes and then someone came around the van. The DJ van was behind me. Mm -hmm. They pulled a gun and pow, 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 pow. And then instantly I got hit with the bullet right in my third vertebrae. And then the way up. So it's vertically lodged between my third and fourth vertebrae. And then I turn because they shot me from the back. So I turn like this. And then the other one either may have grazed the back of my skull because there's a piece of skin that's like raised where it looks yeah. like something, you know, went, oh, uh, go to sleep. So, uh, something, you know, grazed me or something. I instantly, when it happened, I fell to the ground and that was it. Lights, like, wasn't able to move anything. Not even from the neck down, just anything. I wasn't able to move from the head down, from the top yeah. of the head. I wasn't able to 
like go help or I'm alive or or anything. I don't even know if I was able to like cry tears. Yeah. You know, I, I don't even know. Um, and then I wasn't even able to breathe. So I was struggling mm-hmm. to breathe. You know, I was foaming and blood was coming out and I was in and out of consciousness but I could hear people like someone's been shot, Eric's been shot and chaos and people yeah. trying to, you know, save themselves. Only a few people stuck around, you know, to 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 be with me. Yeah. And then um yeah, and then uh, a guy came in, a guy that was at the house. He was taking EMT classes. He came out and stabilized me. So the ambulance got there. And before you know, I'm going to the hospital. They're putting four screws in my head. I'm getting a halo to stabilize my spine. So it's like two screws in your forehead and two, one screw above your ear and one screw above your other ear. And it's like a this cage. It's like a bird cage, yeah. big metal cage. All you can do is move your eyes. You're not able to move your head like this or nothing. Yeah. And then they put tubes in my throat and that's called intubating and that's your life support and it's uh and so that's how i was breathing then i woke up in the morning and my parents have both been divorced since before i was two and so uh, and they're both remarried so i had my mom and my stepdad and my dad and my stepmom there and then some friends and some medical you know staff and then that's where they tell you you've been shot and this yeah. and this again and then you're like then you try to move you know mm-hmm. but i don't think that you have you don't have enough time to think about that. I'm not able to move right now. Yeah. Right now, you're like trying to survive because you're still like you're on life support and you're you're not. You know, they're saying that you may not even have a chance to live. I mean, that's the words that are happening right now. Like you have to get through this certain amount of time to see if you even survive. Yeah. And at that time, I mean, they got you on this bed and it's turning and it's shaking every 15 minutes because of your secretions in your lungs. You got pneumonia because of the injury, everything is happening. They're suctioning you, which is like a straw that goes down in your lungs. It's horrible. And yeah. uh so yeah, you go through that and um and then I uh, uh I was communicating with eye blinks, you know, and then yeah. um eventually the tubes came out uh like a couple weeks. They re- they figured that I wasn't gonna breathe on my own again. So they gave me a tracheotomy. So they put the, they cut your throat and put a trach in, and that's where the tubes go. So you're on life support with this tube in your throat, yeah. and then that's how I was finally able to communicate by tongue clicks and yeah. move my mouth, you know, so that you could uh, you could read my lips. So and that was the hospital part. Yeah, interesting. Did you so your the tongue clicks and <clears throat> and the the mouth movements and stuff like that? That's how you're communicating. Um, yeah. with that, and that's, it's, it's pretty like, it's a, that's good signs, right? It's like, you know what I mean? That's a, that's a good sign, right? You're coming back and you get, you're doing something little by little, man. Yeah. Little by, you know, little by little is progress. You might take like 20 steps forward and then you might take 40 steps backwards. The idea is like to focus on that main goal and just stick with it. You know, consistency. Mm-hmm. Don't let setbacks make your make, you know hold you back you have setbacks but don't let it hold you back yeah. take a setback when we push forward or push harder you know just kind of know the goal is to survive right now that was the main goal in the hospital was to survive and that was september 20th to october 29th and then while you're in there you start learning about rehab this new thing that you're gonna have to go through a facility where they're gonna teach you how to you know, they're going to stretch you and do occupational therapy and physical therapy. And you're going to learn to eat and talk all over again and breathe. Well, hopefully. So the reason that I went to this specific place out in Inglewood, Colorado, was because they could get people off the ventilator. Mm -hmm. So now I've survived. I'm stable. So the next move is the transition to rehab. And the next goal is breathe again to do this. That's it, man. Yeah, man. Imagine if that's your goal to just do that. Yeah. Continuously. Without without a machine. Just that. That's a goal. And I'm not talking like a small goal. Yeah. We're talking like a goal. Like any goal, if it changes yeah. your life. Life changing yeah. goals are the goals that we that we never stop to achieve. Yeah. No, that's uh that's crazy, man. Cause that's just uh that's a, that story right there. It's like it's what respecting the story is uh one of the most i think 
like one of the most overlooked things when it comes to any of this, like when it comes to like just as an individual, right? I'm not even talking about business. I'm not even talking about, I'm talking about a human being, like yeah. respecting someone's story and everything. You know what I mean? Like that you just shared with us right here. That's that's big and that's life-changing because doing that with somebody is like, that's how you create a relationship with someone, right? Yeah. And I think that's important. Show love, man. Like showing love, it's not going to hurt you to show love to somebody, you know what I mean? And uh, pay attention to their story. It's not, that's yeah. not going to, that's, you never did wrong from listening to somebody and understand what they went through, you know? So it's the one thing that separates us from this whole world, our own mm-hmm. story. Yeah. We all it's, got our own story. That's what, when someone says, what, what's, what's different or what, what can you say that you're different from somebody else or what can you add or what can yeah. you bring? My story. Nobody yeah. else has that story, you know? No, nah, man. Hey, we also, all Eric, you made me kind of when I heard, I heard a little bit about it, and then you and then now you're sharing it. Kind of made me tear up a little bit, and kind of did it a little bit right now too as well. I got a little watery eye, but hey, it's because I respect the story, and I'm not like you know what I mean. Not trying to like, yeah. I just I I respect all that. So hey, thank you. I really appreciate you sharing that. It's Thanks for letting me share it. Yeah, no. It, also too, I want to rewind a little bit. So you like hip hop and 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 rap, so Tupac or Biggie? Oh, wow, that's a good one. <laughs> You know, one time they were both together. So yeah. how are you going to separate the, you? The, you know, I, I listen to equally I, uh, both of them, you know. Yeah. And I can remember that was around the time. That's yeah. the interesting thing, too. So I'm working. And that was when I, that was 96. So then you hear about Tupac, you know. And then Biggie. And then yeah. I got shot. All in the same. The same stuff I was thinking, like, how do they not know who did it? How do they not know yeah. who did it? Yeah. Nobody knows who did mine. Mine's a complete no investigation on my case. Yeah. No police report. The reason I say no. that is be- the reason I say that is because of they're just two icons, right? And you kind of see yeah. that you're talking about hip hop and and, yeah. and rap and all that stuff. And I'm you're talking about WWF. It kind of relates to me in a way. And I never even knew that until we started talking about it or you started telling your story. And yeah. I'm just like, dude, I was a big WWF fan too. And and yeah. then hip hop, hip hop and rap. That's my thing too, as well. So I was like, you know what? Like I've talked about this with a few of my friends. I was like, like who do you think? Like they're both icons, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, they they're the ones that created a lot of this stuff, this culture, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they were, you know, with with Tupac, his poetry, too. He had a lot of poetry. Yeah. yeah. So they both had their own style. They you could tell them apart. So yeah. that was the other thing too. They were both unique. They yep. both had their own craft, so they weren't like copycats of each other, yep. you know. And uh, both were able to create some amazing memories. And I can say that yeah. I can just remember listening to the double album too, you know. <laughs> and then just yeah. everybody coming on, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. There's also you. You talked about consistency. Okay, I want to touch yeah. on that before we kind of get more in depth into all this. Yeah. You talked about cons- how how important is that for you on a day to day? Uh, it's it's really important. In fact, if I if I don't do it, sometimes I might be like, "What am I doing? What did I waste my time on?" But I got this goal, and I'm not I'm not constantly like it should be part of like your life. You should like when you wake up and breathe, you should also have like this goal and dream as part of like your food group, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it, you have to constantly work at it, consistent, you know, and it's got to be, you have to constantly work at it and then also see what's not working mm-hmm. so that you can kind of like go, okay, that didn't work, but I'm yeah. still going at it. I'm still going at it. I'm still going at it. You know, that's the thing. It's always, you know, don't stop because when you stop then you're like, wait a minute, I just took up time and time I'll never get back. Yeah. to where I want to achieve this. The more consistent, the more that I keep going at it, the quicker, hopefully, I'm going to achieve that goal or I'm getting closer to the goal. You know, yeah. with my life, it's, I'm always using it, you know, mm-hmm. with with everything, with caregivers, with, you know, my, my life itself is like a business. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I hire my own caregivers. So I'm like the CEO of my life. So when I run, and when I do any type of things, like especially running my business, I'm doing two businesses side by side because I have yeah. business of life and business of this business of PC awareness. Yeah. But um, 
I think consistency is also good because it's clarity for other people around you too. Yeah. You know, when you're inconsistent, then it's going to cause confusion. So. No, for sure, man. I think it's just, I I, I agree with you a hundred percent because it's just like, it's just like you can talk about it right one day and then next week you're not talking about it at all. Mm -hmm. And this, I noticed that a lot of things have changed in my life when it's just, about being consistent and and i think that's just like you hold that accountable to yourself you as an individual you know for sure you watching this video on watching this video and make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up um you're watching this video and you you have some goals you have to be consistent with yourself and be true to yourself and who you are or else you're never going to get it done you made a really good point too just now what you just said about watching yourself on video it took me 21 years to vote private and independent, mm-hmm. to vote privately and independently. And I started making YouTube videos when I would go to vote. And I would come back and I'd like, I, I, I went to go vote and nope, they didn't have the assistive technology for me to vote private and independent. So I had my caregiver, you know, mark the ballot for me. But don't mm-hmm. worry, next time I vote, it's all going to change. And I made yeah. another video like that. And I said, it's all going to change. And then I started watching my own videos. And I was like, Eric, that don't change. You got the same freaking results. You need to change it this time. Yeah. And that's what happened. I did like a vote in. Like I, I did not a vote. I went yeah. there and they didn't have it. And I broadcast it from the polling location. From yeah. Facebook. Yeah. From Facebook, I showed the equipment. I was inside the polling location. And people mm-hmm. were like, you can't do it. I'm like, I got to do this. I'm like, look, I've been trying to vote private independently. And this is the machine that it's supposed to be. It's not even plugged in, and they don't have the sip and puff equipment for me. Yeah. And that was it. And then afterwards, my phone burned up. Yeah. So, so I was I was listening to my own video, but I I listened to myself. Yeah. I watched my own YouTube video and said, "You haven't changed anything, Eric." Like, yeah, you know, I held myself accountable. I was listening to myself. Yeah. You know? Oh man. So, all right. So, what 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 made you? create a brand like you know what i mean like what made you inspire what made you create your brand well you know when i was going back to the childhood days of hip-hop and stuff like that i used to wear like a shirt like my my t-shirts inside out and -hmm. i would visualize that it said like my name backwards like sire i think Mm -hmm. that's what it was Mm -hmm. i always liked that and then when the airbrushing and the bibs and all that stuff came out i would get that and it'd be like be like me with some dice or some or something and a microphone yeah. so i always kind of wanted my own clothing line like and yeah. i don't know where that comes from like where that it just it's like within you know what i mean it's yeah. like it's there and then you know years later when um i opened up easy awareness by design november of 2011 we we're talking about years 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 later i got to go back to like a childhood dream to have a t-shirt like yeah. a, a t-shirt business i didn't really know what was going on when i when i actually jumped into it like the business of learning once uh-huh. I started to like have the equipment, the plotter and the press and stuff, it would just, it went to all different areas. But then um, one of the words that always was said after me that people always said was inspire. They didn't say inspiring or inspirational. They always just said inspire. So mm-hmm. then um, we, um, I started when I was speaking at places, uh, Jesse designed, you know, the inspire. Um, and then she, um, we, she, you know, we put it on my shirt. So I'd go to the schools, or I'd go wherever I was, and I would just wear that and speak. Mm-hmm. We yeah. started seeing the, we started seeing like the the impact. We started seeing like how the kids, like we went to a middle school, and they were like, "We want to be better. We want to do something. We want to do something creative. Like we want to be better. We want to go. We want to be better. Yeah. They wanted to better themselves and stuff." And we were like, "It's giving rise to a positive change. Like this is amazing." So then Jesse and I just like we were like, "We're going to make it public." So we just started to make it more. You know where it was actually available to the public, and then we ended up going to the Damon John Academy, and then that's where we made more focus because we had a website. Yeah, we had no idea how to make any sales. We really we had no no clue on e-commerce. Yeah. But the whole time we were there, we heard about Shopify, so we were like, "All right, well, okay." So then the next day, the next business day, we shut our website down and we opened up the Shopify. And at yeah. that time, we weren't using any print on demand yet. We were doing everything in house. Which, mm-hmm. of course, when we started doing that, that really, when I analyzed that, that's what we started doing print on demand. 
look at after we started doing in-house and how much we carried it and how much like how many times that the shirt was picked up and you know moved around and shipped and how much time it took mm-hmm. and the efficiency uh yeah so i mean that's how and that's like how the inspire brand really came out we started coming on social media and started mm-hmm. saying like what inspires you when people would wear the shirt and they would show a picture and say what inspires them yeah and then when damon john made his purchase like he actually posted photos yeah. And he wrote this big thing and he said, Eric's the brand of inspiration. We were geeked up. Our team was happy. And so that's where Inspire Friday came. So that's how we said, like, what inspires you? Hashtag Inspire Friday. And yeah. people just did that every Friday, every Friday. Just that nice, like, good feeling before going into the, the weekend, that, that yeah. refreshing feeling, and that refresher, that restart, that recharge, you know? If you yeah. were to share their inspiring story, it was just amazing. There's so many stories out there. It's it's, it's thousands and thousands of stories. Mm-hmm. Just amazing stories that we hear. Like so much inspiration out there, man. It's and it's all in different ways. It doesn't have to be someone that's going through some kind of medical barrier or something. Like this could be anything, you know, it could just yeah. be like a person hustles hard. That yeah. person it could be like, you know, someone sees you and they're like, RJ's hustling. Yeah, like I yeah. like, you know, and they just say, Man, you inspire me. So I, I want to send you this shirt or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's and that's how it is, you know. Yeah. So, and each person that purchases, uh-huh. basically, I look at it like a seed that grew into a tree that grew into branches. And yeah. each branch, it goes into a different direction. Still stays yeah. with its positive, you know, mission, but it, it grows branches. It grows like flowers on the branches. Like each person is just growing this tree, you know, yeah. for their for their purpose. Like they've taken it on organically. What inspire means to them, and I think yeah. that's been the greatest thing, man. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get my shirt, man. So I'm gonna have to get some gear from you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, because you uh obviously touched me, right? So I'm just like, you know what, man? I gotta I gotta I gotta get a shirt. So you'll see you'll see in uh, some of my YouTube videos, um, probably like in the next month or so or the next few weeks, uh, rocking one of your shirts, and I'll send you a message to show you too in the video. So, awesome. all right. Uh, so I'll I'll be supporting you right there. Um, did you start off by printing your own shirts, or how did that work? No. Oh your yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we uh we have the plotter and the heat press, so yes, we okay. started out by doing that. At the same time, we also had other people come in. They're like, "Hey, you know, you can do signs, you can do banners, you can do this, you can do this." Mm-hmm. So we tried. We even did big road signs, you know, like signs at like the Burger King or you know those kind of signs. Yeah, we even did that. It was <laughs> a nightmare. It was a nightmare. That business is so cutthroat. Now, we don't yeah. have a boom truck or anything like that. So what we did is we developed strategic partnerships with like other sign companies so that when they worked for us, they worked for Easy Awareness. So they would do the install, you yeah. know, take it down and things like that. But it was a night. It was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. And then for the multi, uh, for printing in bulk, because eventually we were like, man, we got to volumes, this pressing stuff and cutting stuff, you yeah. know, and the weeding stuff. That's just... We got a, we we do, we uh developed a partnership with a printing company here, kid mm-hmm. company, and uh and then uh, they gave us our wholesale prices for printing, and so that was how we started to be able to to expand, you know, and be able okay. to to get things faster too, you know, and be yeah. able to drop ship. I mean, they, everybody pretty much used like them. They uh-huh. use Alpha or One Source or or One Stop, you know, or mm-hmm. so it's just like okay, we will just drop ship it to you. There's no hidden. There's no, you know, there's nothing hidden about where we're getting the stuff from. So we just yeah. started drop shipping it and then they would print it and then it would get picked up or we would mm-hmm. ship it. So that's where that came. But where the print on demand started to come in was um, where we were just like, we had people that wanted stuff on the weekend. So it was like, well, we got to go back for a business day, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then bake it and then ship it. And it was like, it wasn't accessible. And then I need things accessible, you yeah. know, mobile. When we started doing this print on demand, it opened doors. Like it was just like, you know, it made things so accessible, so mobile. Mm-hmm. And then who would know that, you know, back, you know, in 2018, that I would be in bed for 820 days, you know, up to mm-hmm. like, and I spent 820 plus days in bed. Yeah. So we basically worked from bedsides. We couldn't even go to the shop where the equipment was or nothing. So it was like we already had it set up for the print on demand service. So we just had to, you know, tweak it and do what we could do and learn, you know, from there. But uh, 
yeah, I mean, we haven't, we have the shop, but mm-hmm. we haven't used it too much, not this year and not mm-hmm. even, not much at all last year. You know, mm-hmm. it's there, but yeah. a lot of it, we try to just, you know, do print on demand service when we can, mm-hmm. you know, that's the best way. That was the. It, you, uh, you see me smile. You see me smiling over here because I'm just like, you're doing it right. And you're still like, you're, you said you're in, you're in bed for 128 days, right? Correct. 800. And eight, oh, 800. Sorry. Yeah. So 800. March, my bad. March, March 1st, 2018 to December 20th or the end of December, 2019. And then I was up in my chair for like for 2020 uh-huh. for, from January to July July 28th, because I remember it was a Taco yeah. Tuesday. And then I had a whole, so I, I relapsed. I had three three laps with three, I relapsed three times with the bone infection, which created a hole in my body about mm. the size of a half dollar. Mm. So the only time I was getting out of bed was go to the urologist every two weeks and go to the wound care center. And I had my fundraiser for my van twice, two fundraisers. And I did Skate Land Winter Fundland, which is an event that I do. Every year, except this year, I wasn't able to do it. Um, it's where we collect coats, toys, uh, hats, gloves, and food mm-hmm. for all the different charities at, at a skating rink that my mm-hmm. uh, cousin, my, my second cousin owns. So mm-hmm. they donate the space, mm-hmm. you know, and the employees. And then we collect uh, food and stuff like that. We weren't able to do it this past, you know, yeah. 2020. Yeah, 2020. We weren't able to do it just because of COVID and stuff. But, um, yeah. So I did yeah. that. I made sure to do that. Get out of bed for that. But other than that, no, man, I've been working from bedside and being on antibiotics for 17 weeks straight too. Mm. That's not easy. Like you're mental. You really have to push hard and focus to get through that madness because it mm. just does not make you want to do things. It yeah. stops you. Like it just like, I'd get on the laptop and I would just be there and I'd be like, I'm going to work. And then, I just need to push it away and just mm-hmm. like try and like figure out my life, like trying to like just survive. It was horrible. It was like just horrible, horrible, like trying to just, just survive, man. It's just been, it's been a rough three years, man. Yeah, It really has. So the, the that's why I'm happy to be up in the chair and doing this interview with you, man. Yeah, man. No, I, yeah. I think, yeah, no, that's cool, man. I think I just, it just no, there was no excuse made at all during that whole thing. The whole time you're in bed, it seems like you were still making, I wasn't going to cuss, but you're still making shit happen yeah. during all that. And I love that. And you see me smiling. It's not because I, it, I just, I know, I, 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 I kind of see it. I'm kind of picturing it, but, and you're still making the best out of it. And that's what I'm about. I'm all, all the situation that can be the, hor- the worst situation ever. But yeah. you're still making the best out of that situation. And that's what I thrive on too as well. It makes me smile, makes me happy. And you know what I mean? It just sometimes we think take things for granted, right? And like sometimes yeah. I'm just like, dude, it's like that's fun. Like why are you making it seem like it's not fun when it is fun? It's like you're just thinking about it differently and a whole different perspective. And you still just you don't think about it that way. If you look at it a different way. It's literally, it changed your whole perspective on things and the way you think about life. And you do that to every single like scenario or situation. You're like, why you got to look at it that way? How come we can't look at it this way? How come we can't look at it this way, this way or this way? And I just being open-minded to any type of, you know, scenario, like open-minded, it can change your life. Right. So props to you, man. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to to get up every day to, mm -hmm. I, you know, Oh, I I dream my dreams mm-hmm. and then I get to wake up and put it into action. Yeah. You know, so then I go to sleep and I dream it. Then I wake yeah. up and I put it into action. It's like, I'm so like focused and so happy about the things that I'm doing. Uh-huh. Especially like a lot of, it's always helping other people too. Uh-huh. I mean, like everything I do probably pretty much helps other people. I mean, like I, a lot of the things I do, it's helping another person. When I do my podcast, like do interviews like this, I'm hoping that somebody out there, it's going to get help. Yep. It's going it's yep. to, you know, um, a person will be like, you need to eat. I'll be like, nah, I'm, I'm like, you know, I don't, and they're like, you cold or high. I'm like, I don't know. I even thought about it. Like yeah. I'm so like, you know, out of not thinking of food and, and, and weather or climate because I'm so like zoned into yeah. what I'm doing that I don't even feel it, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. So somebody <laughs> wreck, so somebody brings it up to you. You're like, oh yeah, maybe I am a little hungry. Yeah. You know, or something. But I don't know. I think that's just how bad you want it. Yeah. You know, that's how bad you want it. Like, there's just yeah. things you want in life. Yeah. And you want to be able to, you know, like all the experience that you have, mm-hmm. you don't want to hold it back. Mm-hmm. So that's why you want that platform where yep. you can share it. Because, you know, there's other people that are struggling that are not going to be able to handle it the way you do. Yeah. That's just the way it is. People yeah. tell me all the time, look, if I, if I was you, I don't think I would be able to do this. And yeah. so we, I have to understand that there are people like that because I don't know what that's like because I'm always, you know, pushing. So I have to make sure that people that are going through depression and stuff, yeah. you know, whatever yeah. it is, that to, to, um, bring them out so that they can have the best quality of life. Yep. You know, yeah. that's what it's all about. So like uh, you were talking about print on demand, right? A little bit like how it like it basically took your business to that next level where you don't have to worry about the print. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, right? just as- um, it, it, how, 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 how did that help you with uh, kind of like in a way you're, you're outsourcing it in a way or you're using the service, right? And then you're kind of like, I think it's taking that attention off of you have to go to the shop and make sure like all these, the, the shirts and all the product is being printed and shipped out to your customers. You doing that, how has that impacted your business as a whole as you're growing? Well, it's, it's, it helped us grow. We were able to focus on more customers too. Because we yeah. also, you know, with um, Jesse's also doing like branding and stuff and graphic design work. Yeah. You know, at the same time, like we're helping. We felt like three, one, two, three, three or four co- coffee companies. You know, we're helping them with like their branding, their identity, their yeah. taglines, like all that stuff. It's awesome. So it yeah. gives us time to work on projects and stuff. While at the same time, the Inspire brand is is able to kind of like basically, you know, do itself. You get the sale and you just kind of pay attention. Okay, print full is printing it. Okay, it's being yeah. sorted. Oh, it's being shipped. Let me check the tracking number. And I'll even email the customer. So I'll like I, I value everybody that works that works with us, you know. Mm-hmm. So if I can, I'll be like, hey, thanks for you know ordering, and I see it's coming the shipping, and I'm like, oh, especially yeah. the last couple of months, I'm like, okay, well, just let me know. If there's any issue, just let me know. Call me. Yeah. There's, a, there's a thread missing. Call me. Just go ahead. That's fine. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, what's your return policy? I'll be like, don't worry about it. We got it. You know we're. We're 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 gonna make sure that you get 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 what you ask for, you know. Make sure that you feel excited about wearing what you wear. If it's not what you ask for, we will make sure it's right, you know. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, print on demand helped us grow. That was that that helped us grow into yeah. being able to get more customers, being able to involve ourselves with more projects. Yeah. So it, could, it created more. Uh, basically, it freed up a lot of that time that you're doing, and now you can focus yeah. like on the marketing. And then I think that's really awesome that you're leveraging businesses right but it's making making sure it works for the both of you and then you doing that is like free advertisement in its way right yeah and you doing that building that relationship this is what talking to people and being an actual good damn human being this is what can create can create more opportunity for you right yeah yeah i mean for sure that's i don't know this is how i am you know mm-hmm. i'm not I try to be as very upfront, transparent, and real as I can. Yeah. You know, I I don't in not shysty or shady or any of that other unethical stuff. Yeah. I probably can sometimes have my own battle to wonder if if like doing this is ethical, even though it's like it is, it just feels weird to me to do it. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't, you know. Like I'll question everything, like I just want to make sure I'm doing things the right way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing like I'm doing things the way that it should be done and that it's that I'm just legit, you know, I'm just trying to, you know what I mean? Just trying to do things correctly and just make sure that uh, I'm also, you know, taking care of the people that support us. Yeah. You know, that's the yeah. main thing. But you know, if I didn't, we didn't have friend on demand when I went in bed rest. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could feel the weight of that right now on my yeah. head. You know, that, that, that amount of, that would have been really difficult. Because, yeah. because someone would have to be here when someone, you know, like Jesse's here with me. So someone would have to come here 
and then she would have to go there to make the the, the product, and then go to the mail, the post office and get it shipped. And oh, oh, yeah, I'm so glad. I'm just glad that we were prepared. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, it's crazy. I was glad that we were prepared, and uh, like I said, it makes it more accessible. Like I'm a big person of accessibility, obviously, because you know mm-hmm. of uh, having a disability and stuff. So I'm always about accessibility. So yeah. that's kind of like what it did. You know, it made it made it accessible. Yeah. Made it accessible for for and be a mobile. I mean, it basically became a mobile. You created a mobile business, you yeah. know, and uh, yeah, of just especially when the pandemic hit. You know, even though some of the blanks, the warehouses were running out of blanks, and they were like, or they were closed altogether. Yeah, you know, but um, there were some sales with Printful and stuff that <laughs> every bit counted. Then yeah. every bit because we tried to file for grants. Mm-hmm. And we've been denied and denied and denied because they don't earmark like they have like minority, gender, you know, veteran owned business. But when it comes to a, a business owner with a disability, they don't have like a thing. So I've been fighting that too. Yeah. Just trying to just like, hey, can you please put it on the on the application? Yeah. You know, there are people that have disabilities that own businesses. You know, there's a there's actual disability accreditation. You can get accredited, like a like the Better Business Bureau type style. Yeah. You can get a, a DO, DOBE accreditation that says you're a, a, a disabled business owner, which helps with the big box stores and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. No, man. So, like you also, to you, so you integrated uh, Shopify with Printful, and this is how all the orders and so far as like kind of get people inside of. Like when the order comes in on your actual website, it goes through Printful and then the Printful's, I mean, on Printful's end, it's being processed, printed and shipped to the customer and you're not, you're not touching the actual product yeah. yourself. Oh. It's beautiful. It really is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand like the, you know, that they charge the shipping stuff, you know, per item and stuff like that. You mm-hmm. know, like they have their, and then. You have to figure out the shipping. Do you, you know, put it in some costs or do you add this or you have calculated shipping? That's yeah. kind of a, a definitely an interesting thing to balance out is yeah. the shipping, you yeah. know, how that works and stuff. But when you do that, you can actually go and tell people that they say, like, they have some ideas. And I'm like, get a print, you know, get a Shopify account, get an Etsy account, get, you know, get a Printful account. Like, if you got these t shirt ideas or you got these, design ideas and stuff you know just yeah. start with a few you know yeah. see see where it goes it really opened the doors it really did it i mean it's just it really it, it yeah i mean it's a game changer i guess you would say right yeah it is P-O-P-O-D is, P-O-D is, a, is a game changer yeah, yeah. no man yeah. i just i think it's a it's a really awesome opportunity and you're kind of like you're leveraging that and you're a perfect example of like you know what i mean you're making it work in your favor and you're, and yeah. you're starting something and you created something really amazing behind it. And then you have your whole movement and stuff like that and what you believe in right behind it and everything, you yeah. know what I mean? It's all there and you're just boom, 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 pushing it. Yeah. And, and now you're on the interview with me over here. So that's, I know and that's where it lands. You see, <laughs> that's where well, yeah, I mean, you're going to have to start our own uh, rap group pretty soon and keep this up. Yeah, well, you're on the you're on the West Coast, and I'm on pretty much the Mid East Coast. I'm Michigan. Now, we we go we're gonna we're gonna collab and come together. <laughs> Print on demand, the PODs. Yeah, uh, nah, man. The PODs. Just, also, <laughs> also, too, I find it really interesting because when I reached out to you, you came back at me like, "Bam, I'm ready, baby." Bam, bam, bam. And you sent me over some stuff, and I love that, man. And um, we kind of talked about workflow and. Like I always talk about workflow and systems in place. And I think this is one of the most important things when it comes to like taking your business to that next level. Um, People don't have an understanding because the next thing you know, they end up doing stuff that they think that they're doing correct, the correct way, or they are doing it the correct way, but they're kind of all over the place. Yeah. Um, You want to talk about that and how you, with your workflow and what's the, what's, what has it done for your business and like, and like your accountability and stuff like that for you. Well, I mean, like, you know, whatever we're doing, then we, we collect the data, mm-hmm. you know, and we see like what's working, what's not working. And we're honest with, with where we need to improve, mm-hmm. you know? And so that basically we change things. We're like, okay, that worked, that didn't work. Yeah. How do we, 
what, what do we do differently? Yeah. How do you know we we look at all the different areas, all the different outcomes, and go mm-hmm. okay. So, I mean, that would be the big thing with us is, you know, did we do this ad? How did that ad work? Did we do a target market? No, the target audience that failed. That failed miserably, you know. And say, okay, let's try something else. Maybe it's keywords. You're like yeah. these keywords. Okay, like these are the keywords that are going to work. Yeah, they're, they're going to work. And you're like, okay, <laughs> maybe it's let's try something different. Like, you know, okay. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you do something and then you you take notes. Yeah. You know, you collect the data of it, and you're like, okay, so. This is what happened, and this is uh, this did not work, you know. And yeah. it's also like you said, accountability, you know, being honest. Like, man, that was a fail. Like, can we let's do let's try this, you know. Um, and you know, and it's with different systems, yeah. you know, like with the keywords or with the, you know analytics and you know uh, conversion. Just mm-hmm. you know, oh, there's so much different things that you can actually collect data to try and figure out. What's ha- what's working? What's not? Real time ads, you know, with the Shopify. When you do the ad, you can go into your back door or your back end and actually look and go, oh, yeah. that per- I just sent this to this country, and I see all these people are logging on from that country now. Okay, yeah. well, it worked. Or like when you send out an email, Shopify's got a little uh, a feature that'll tell you how many people opened it. Yeah. You know, twenty three percent, thirty two percent out of the emails that you sent were open. Let's focus on them, Eric. Well, don't focus on the other people that didn't open it. Let's send yeah. an ad just to the 32% of the people or something. So yeah. interesting. No, I think uh so leads me to my next question because you know what I mean? You, you kind of got me thinking now. Like what what are you? So what traffic or what type of ads are you running? You're running Facebook, Instagram, what 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 platforms are you? What social media ads are you running? Well, interesting, we were doing Facebook, but when um uh we're not doing anything like in Instagram right now. We were mm-hmm. doing a lot of stuff like straight up through Shopify. We mm-hmm. started using like the email. We wanted to do something different mm-hmm. and go like straight email to email. Yeah. And that was interesting. Um, one of the things with the Amazon, we got the, what is the AMS? Mm-hmm. Now when we try to log in, it says that we're not there where we don't. So I'm like, I want to spend money with you and you're not letting us like yeah. what the heck. So I'm like, why? We, we've emailed them. There's like no direct contact to try to, because we would love to do Amazon ads, you know, like yeah. be able to, but we had like, you know, where they give you the code or whatever, they set you up with it. Yeah. We had that. We okay. had that. And now when you do it, it says that they never, it's like, oh, I don't know you. You don't yeah, know. Yeah. And I'm like, so we would love to do that. <laughs> we've been trying. Okay. But uh, because I, I want to be able to, to advertise on there you know with our merch but i don't know what that i don't know how like what to do what's the answer we've emailed them and yeah. it's always just like an automated like, yeah. person general kind of thing uh we've never done any uh, uh etsy like uh we were looking at the videos like mm-hmm. maybe doing like it says you can shoot like a 10 to 15 second video yeah. not sure how good that works yeah you know how well that works um I'd like to maybe try that out. Yeah. But um Facebook ads mm-hmm. and then um I don't think we've ever done Instagram. Yeah. We've never done we've never done Instagram ads. We've done like Instagram uh our own thing, like where you post and say, here's the code, you know, get such and such off or something like that. You know, but not purchasing the advertisement from Instagram. Okay. Okay. Well it is so, also it is. So interesting, man. It's just I, I have I have a few buddies that say that uh that kind of stepped away from like Facebook ads and they just went straight over. They're going straight to Google and leveraging like uh you know leveraging Google ads or the customer on Google and then if, once they see something profitable, they'll go over to like different um like social media like Instagram or Facebook or you know what I mean and and see what they can do to turn that profit into a bigger profit margin because obviously it's like working over there they want to see if they can leverage that and they know it's working over there on google if they can leverage it on social media and see what type of uh you know see what they get the results they get over there so the other the other thing that's interesting is that uh there's barriers that's been created so i use dragon naturally speaking like mm-hmm. right now so when i type to you i'm using my voice 
yeah. when I do merch or anything, I'm using Dragon Edge, so I'm speaking it. Okay. Some of these platforms are not compatible. So I'm only getting like 50%. Like in Instagram, they yeah. want to keep it all on a mobile platform. So you have like a Chrome extension or extension, but I'm only able to do so much. I'm not able to have the full potential of IG. So I'm like, it's this frustrating. It's like that stuff is challenging. And I, and then I talk to like someone that's like an influencer mm-hmm. that teaches like Instagram courses. And I'm like, what do I do? Like, how can, like, what, mm-hmm. what's the answers? So it's like, yeah, like if I want to broadcast on Instagram, I have to use my cell phone. I'm not able to use my laptop. There's yeah. this, this, or say I want to load a video. Mm-hmm. I have to go in and like be like a developer. Like I'm making yeah. a website and then I have to go in the that way to upload my video. It just takes so much time. Yeah. Yeah. So no, same with Facebook. There's, you know, there's all these different features that don't work for me. So yeah. it's like, and I want to be able to do it. Like, yeah. cause I, I can be, if I'm laying down or like right now, instead of like watching something on TV for 30 minutes, I'd rather put that time and energy towards, you know, on the platform and maybe creating sales. But yeah. when I have this barrier, that's not, a, you know, the voice recognition software is not um, compatible with this platform. You know, with that certain feature, yeah. it doesn't. And so it's like, it can be, it can be frustrating, man, because I can spend hours trying to figure just one feature out, trying to yeah. figure it out, and then I don't get the, I don't get the answer. So I'm like, no, like it yeah. felt like my old day. Just like, what yeah. happened? Like, where? You know, you just I don't like that feeling of like not, a comp, like not being able to get to that comp, like, yeah. An answer and you spend so much time yeah but it's important because if you could get that mm-hmm. and you could actually you know create traffic or generate sales or yeah. you know what i mean like grow the business and it's no, i just man, for, for sure so, like that's, that's a hard that's like a developer uh issue right there right and then that's something that they should be improving on on the platforms for people yeah. you know people like yourself and I, I i see exactly where you're coming from right there um, leads me to my next question. What is so you're talking about like the other what other print on print on demand platforms are you on? Like Am- Amazon Merch, Merch by Amazon, Etsy, what else? All three that you just said them. Okay. Those yeah, three? All, yeah. Okay. I I know that you do videos like on Redbubble and stuff. Yep. We have a Redbubble account, but we have just not have focused a lot of attention to it yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I know you got videos. Like, like I probably watch your videos if I could learn Redbubble. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh how about, how about KDP? Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, we have the Inspire journals on there. So nice. we are we are utilizing the KDP. Yep. Uh-huh. There's like uh, there's the Inspire journals that basically you write down like your um, your daily inspiration, and yep. then you can also take a picture and stuff of it. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. And then uh-huh. also we did one for like uh, so one of the designs is inspired something fresh and it's got food. So yeah. we made like a cooking thing for like people that, that want to like create recipes. It's got like oh. cooking time and stuff like that. And we consulted with an actual chef, you know, before we actually made it. So we knew what to put in it. We're like, so what do we need to put in these pages? And then, so that worked. And then I uh, actually sent one to uh, Paul Wahlberg, you know, Wal- no Wahlbergers, the, yeah. the franchise. Yeah, I met him a couple of years ago. And so I was like, oh, well, you know, he's a, he's a chef. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, this is definitely going to work, you know, help out. He wears the Inspire stuff too, so uh, he was he was digging the the journal. It's like, oh yeah, this is cool. Gets me to thinking because my my great grandma she wasn't no chef, but she can cook pretty damn good. <laughs> you know, yeah. some uh, uh, homemade tortillas and uh, menudo and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty good. I'm a foodie um, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, what's your favorite, what's your favorite food? I don't have a favorite because when I got shot, I mm-hmm. wasn't able to eat. So it was taken away from me. Okay. So when I eat, I just like appreciate the gratitude of being able to eat again and taste yeah. again and having that excitement. So like today, yeah. Taco Tuesday, I don't really think about where the taco is coming from. I'm just like, it's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> We're getting it somewhere. It's going to be something. It's going to be exciting. I might even play a song. Yeah. I might make my own song. I might, you know, I'm just. 
and you know, and then uh, you know, Mondays sometimes we do Middle Eastern or Mediterranean Mondays, and Mom, we do we do chicken, we do chicken kebabs on or chicken wings on Thursdays or something, or it's just man, I love food, man. You know what I mean? I just like flavor, and I do, I like fe- food and fellowship though too. I think food is food is enjoyable when you enjoy it with someone else when they can have the experience with you. Yeah, you know, uh huh. It's like that's how we were trying to get you tacos before this. That's why I messaged you. (laughs) We were just gonna door dash it. Oh yeah, celebrate. Yeah, we're gonna do some Taco Tuesday celebration. Uh, Dude, we're gonna have. We might have to do that. Might have to turn this into a second, a part two, man. And uh, part two, man. We could do like a taco where we're eating and we're hanging out. Like I always wanted to do that too, by the way. It's funny Let's that you it. say that because I'm just like, people like we can literally just sit down, do just go back and forth and kind of like share some knowledge with people. And we can literally sit down, eat some food. Some people may want to watch a seat. Some people may not want to watch a seat. So the people that don't want to watch a seat, you don't have to watch the damn thing. <laughs> go somewhere else. You heard it here. It's part two. We got to do it. We got to do a Taco okay. Tuesday part two. Uh, we got, all right, man. We got it. We could do that. We could do that. Definitely for sure. That's a, that's an awesome idea. Cause I think it's really cool because we're, we're eating and stuff, and but we're just hanging out, you know? So I the think the best ideas, cool. man, it's like food and fellowship, man, you know? Yep. It's very like you're very in the zone. You're you're comfortable. You're enjoying. You're in a happy moment. Mm-hmm. And you're able to just really take down any walls or any barriers and just peel back any layers of your, your barriers to, to see the true inner selves of each other and just say, hey, let's we're just enjoying this, man. Let's talk about like we could talk about shipping, you know, or something like, <laughs> man, I was shipping for you last last month. Like, uh <laughs> like, um. No, man, that's a big thing in the community too. shipping, the shipping times and stuff like that. I know it's a big topic and that can be something um, we can be talking about in, in like in the next episode of shipping times and stuff. Um, oh. But that'll be a good one. Yeah. You I mean, and if there's any, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, man, anything like dude, I'm, I'm down, man. Just uh, okay. shipping time. Just how, was that, how was that for you? And uh, with the uh, linking with, so you do you direct to Printful, right? You're linking, you're integrating yeah. Shopify to Printful. How are the shipping times for you and Q4? I think Printful did what they could do. It's when it goes into the person that's, you know, the company that's shipping it or yeah. that's, you know, it's in transit. It's in transit. It's it's in transit. It's at a hub. Yeah. It's in transit. Oh, wait, no, it went to go. It, like all the product, like I, I'm telling you, they must have their own life for like the last part of the year. Like mm-hmm. our, our, our shirts and stuff were celebrating the end of t- 2020 because they yeah. were taking vacations. They went to like California they went to North Carolina. That they were like, oh, I'm going to Texas. I'm going to Michigan. Wait a minute, oh, I'm in Michigan. Nope, I'm going back to Texas. Yeah. Like we had product that came to Flint that was de- supposed to be delivered in Flint. It sat in the the facility, waiting in to be in transit to be delivered, and then all of a sudden it was in Texas. Just decided, mm-hmm. hey, that's why I call it package land. That's like the idea. Like I got like the the shirt and the hat and the you know, the socks and they're sitting like in, in a, almost like an Alice in Wonderland thing called package land. Yeah. Sipping on, drinking, sipping, eating tacos <laughs> and sipping on tea. You know what I'm saying? Like, to like, where, where does it go? Yeah. And then you got the tracking. You're tracking it. You're like, okay, I'm tracking it for this person. I'm, I'm excited because I want this person really excited to get it. And then it just disappears. Where'd it go? <laughs> where does it go and then you're like you're typing you're like okay well i'm just gonna ask the united states postal service do you know where the package is and all they do is tell you the same info that you already know yeah like i know that i got a tracky then it's like mm-hmm. then i'm like oh and it just disappears yeah and then it like emerge it's like a shark or something the fin comes up and then the fin goes away and you're like where'd the shark go and then like two weeks later it's like then it's right there oh okay yeah. there it is <laughs> there's my package no yeah. no that's we had a customer order 200 and something hoodies, 200 hoodies, something like that. 15 of them were coming from another warehouse because of what they ordered. It was because of the sizes too. That's the other thing we came across. Yeah. Like sizes, there was a certain brand and the only certain sizes was in, in that color. So it had to come from like four different warehouses or something like that. It was like, and so these last 15, it went from the 11th. This is the shipment that came on December 11th. Yeah. We waited and waited, and it still didn't get there until the end, until right before New Year's. 
Yeah. The last 15 got there. Like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's, it's, yeah, so, it's. How are you keeping up with all that, like the customer service? Because I know you got some people like, hey, where's my stuff at, man? Everybody thinks for Amazon. They all think we're Amazon. <laughs> that the order goes in and they're, they're already emailing us. Is my order already on its way? No. Yeah. Like, we're not Amazon. We don't have yeah. drones and blimps and stuff. Like, no, like. Yeah. You have to wait. Like we had to put we had to put disclaimers on the website. We had to make sure when they got the email that it said like how the shipping time was and then it's possible. We had to put due to COVID that this uh-huh. is, you know, it's out of our control and like what you know, how long it could take. We just had to keep up with it. And then one of them, only one though. So actually we did pretty good because we only this one person wanted their order uh-huh. and it was way past. So we just refunded them and let, and we just said when the order gets there, just, you know, Merry yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Basically, you know, I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Just, it's just, yeah, we just, we had to do what we could do, mm-hmm. you know, and just stay, stay in communication. Well, you talk about uh, the word with the C, <laughs> you know, the, just uh, the- just, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the word with the C. <laughs> there you go, right there. A new design oh. idea. Yeah, we, there you go. <laughs> there you go. The word with the C. The word with the C, consistency. It even rhymes, man. <laughs> Got a nice flow to it. So uh, we just had to stay on top of it, just like talk to them. And a lot of times when you talk to them and you kept mm-hmm. them updated, they're like, oh, I'm not, you know, yeah. it's okay. When it gets there, I'll be happy. You know, I'm just going to be happy to be able to get it. And you're like, you're on your end. You're like, you're feeling bad. You're like, man, I really want them to have it, you know, but that was it. You just had to stay, yeah. just stay, stay on top of them and just talk to them. And, you know, I don't think that we said like, we're, like, we're sorry. It's not coming. I think that we just talked to them mm-hmm. because what are we going to, I mean, there's nothing. It's not, it's not their fault. Yeah. You know, we just wanted to let them know we were just keeping yeah. the communication open and keeping them informed. And yeah. stuff, and of course, there were a couple people that were like, "My order was this, and um, it's just getting it's it's taking this long." I just what what is going on? It's like, yeah. but I guess they just didn't realize that you know. But also, we told them too: if you're planning on shipping Christmas gifts to people, uh, be careful because yeah. you're also going to learn how shipping is right now. Because it's not just us. Yeah. You know, everybody is uh, all going through the shipping woes and stuff. So, yeah. just, you know, make best of it. It's Here we are. Uh, crit- that's, there's something right there that you just said that was probably really important. It's just like keeping them informed. You can take a negative into a positive just by letting the customer know and keeping them up to date with something. So, like, say, for example, like with like Etsy and you have a customer that messages you, messages you and you let's like tells you like, Hey, where's my package? Just keep them informed. Like I'll update you in four more days. Let's let you know how the process goes. And now this can be like tedious and people are like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Well, this is part of the game. Right. And a lot of people get into print on demand because they don't want to take care of the customer service. But if you're it's on different, different platforms, one. yeah. Customer service. Yeah, customer value the customer, man. It's, it's uh, number one. Yep. It's number one. <laughs> number one, that's like when people open a business and they think that when they start a business they're not gonna you know oh i just work when i want to you know that's like you know you're gonna yeah. work you're gonna but yeah i mean like like you just said yeah you got to take care of the customer and you got to keep that communication open i mean that's why some of the companies that you see like when you make a pizza you know you order a pizza online and it's like oh joe's taking the dough out right now and making it for you you're like oh yeah. cool joe then you watch like this, this simulator and you're like <laughs> And and Irene just got it and put it in the oven. Awesome. Yeah. And then yeah. it comes out. And it's like and Travis is about to deliver it. Oh, okay. Well, cool. All right. You know, you see that. And I don't know if there's a way, if there's an app to like incorporate that, yeah. like, you know, something where the customers got it on their phone and they're like, oh, yeah. I could actually see. Like I'm Pretty getting smart. real time, real time, you know, uh, yeah. Real time what's going on with my products. I don't even have to ask them because I'm looking at it. But then of course, then they're gonna look at it and go, Well, it's been at the facility for five days. Why is it not moving? Well, I'm gonna mm-hmm. email. Hey, I noticed it's at the facility. 
it hasn't made any motion. It's just been staying there, you know, because they don't understand that things have to go through hubs and customs and sorters and, you know, all mm-hmm. that stuff. But that's interesting that you say that because you can, you can do something like that, right? You can, you can, if you can create something, because Shopify does that too, right? The real time, the actual viewer at checkout and then purchase, boom. So they do yeah. that, right? They took that idea and they understood that because I know like Domino, Domino's and, and all these other companies, they do stuff like that. And yeah. you know, now if you can do that for yourself, that will kind of keep the customer more informed about the whole process, right? I think that would be pretty cool too. Uh, any app developers that are out there listening, RJ and I get a, a cut. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do they call it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Eric. no, man. So, so, question What are your goals for this year? Now, this um, right here, the idea behind this is to obviously inspire somebody. And this is perfect for you right here, man. So, this could be personal, business, health, everything, right? Everything, anything. Okay, great. Um, so, I would say, I just fundraised for a van. It took 30 bucks. So while I was on bed rest, I also mm-hmm. fundraised and I got a brand new wheelchair accessible van. And you can see it on my YouTube channel, the video, when I went to go get the van. Okay. So that was a big life-changing goal. So yeah. now it's, the, I've been renting this house since June, 2012. Now it's time to be able to get a house that's accessible, that is like visitable. Mm-hmm. When I say visitable, that means like, because I have friends that are, they're they're deaf, they're they're blind, they have, you know, they use amigos and wheelchairs and crutches. So oh, what's the new word I just learned? Short statue, oh boy. But my my one friend Lydia, oh, I gotta remember how to say it. Yeah. But anyways, um, because she said like a little when I say little person, that could be offensive. But it's mm-hmm. short of statue. I think that's what it is. It's something mm-hmm. like that. So I I listen to them and I'm like, well, how would you network if you were at a party? How would you communicate amongst a person mm-hmm. or in that setting? And so I want to be able to develop that in my household. So if they came over through assistive technology, they would be able to like, you know, maybe text on the, the wall or something for a person that's deaf and they would be able to communicate or a person that's blind. You turn on like audio things that tell them where the front door and the back door or the, the bathroom is or, yeah. you know, and whatnot. And of course, wider hallways and all these different things. So I, I, that's, my goal is to get a house and hopefully if it's not the big dream house yet, at least it's the next level of ownership of a house. So I've yeah. never owned a house. I've rented and I've had an apartment and now I rent a house. So ownership of a home is yeah. next. Um, that's a big goal. And then of course, uh, a book, you know, doing all these podcasts and stuff. I got so much content now that I've started to work on like a book outline. Yeah, You know, and a lot of them always say, I don't have a book yet. Where's your book at? And I'm like, oh, I don't have a book yet. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to start listening to the people, you know, and so in making a book and the book's going to be more like driven on stories because mm-hmm. I think stories are really powerful, Yeah, you know, and that's the things that we remember. Yeah. It's a person's story. When you tell something, a lesson in a story, you know, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me yeah. tell you a story. So it's going to be on that. It's going to be like something like that. And then, um, like, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe there'll be a, a, a family or something. Yeah. It's always a goal that I put down. Yeah. I don't have any kids or anything, but Hey, you never know, yeah. you know, um, business goal, just keep growing the inspire brand, you know, as yep. much as we can. I want to see it on as many people as possible, help as many people as possible. Yeah. You know, um, uh, what else was there? There's more. Continue to be able to do show like interviews. Mm-hmm. I think the more that you do interviews, the more you learn about yourself too. Mm-hmm. And you start to like, it's almost like a, a muscle yeah. that you've never, that you have an exercise. Like mm-hmm. I've developed this, this exercise muscle yeah. of, of doing interviews. It's like the interview muscle. Yeah. And it's really interesting. Um, the, the doors that opens up in your, your mind, the things that you forget yeah. that are like down in there and memories and they come out, you're like, that's why I did that. Or that's why I do this now. So yeah. it's, and it, and it helps people, you know, that's the yeah. main thing. And what other goal? Oh, just making sure that I stay healthy. No more relapse. Yeah. You know, being able to get up in my chair every day, uh, just being able to breathe air and eat and food. And those, that's my like health goal, right? I guess yeah. that'd be like my, you know, just, just staying healthy. 
Yeah. And then um, keeping my staff, growing my team, my caregiver team, my business team. You know, that's a goal always, yeah. you know, and just making sure that all of us are happy and yeah, just enjoying life. You know, yeah, I think man. that's, I don't know. I'm sure there's more. I have, I have this stuff written down because I read yeah. it all the time, you know, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, I make six month goals, business, health, personal, and I have deadlines to them. Yeah. And then I make like yearly goals and then like five year goals and stuff. Yeah. So that's, it's like all written. It's, it's, I have it mapped out and I read it and I was just reading the goals like earlier on my yeah. Evernote. So, yeah, you know, oh, man. no, that's so was, a, awesome. Oh, I work on my music. I am a hip hop artist, man. Are you still doing that? Yeah, I performed on stage 17 years later, man. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, the okay. D-Man Foundation. It's a foundation that built the bar- first ever barrier-free music therapy recording studio. So, like, 17 years later, after my injury, I was on stage, like, ready to rock it. You got that? You got that video? I do. It's on YouTube. So, all right, I got to check that out. I got to check hey, it man. out. I came out. I was like, yeah, all right, let me explain. <laughs> In life, it gets hard to maintain. A lot of things try to drive you insane. But I'm not going to sit and complain. I'm out here living my life, doing my best, proving it twice. So nice on the mic device. But sometimes you got to sacrifice. So um, don't count me out. I do exist. I'm here to help the world. I'm true to this. This whole journey is spiritual. This ain't the Danny and be the miracle. Hope you didn't figure me. Being stopped by a spinal cord injury, never saying I can't because I can. And if you want to know why, because I'm a D man, D man. Music is my therapy all around the world. It's all about the charity, D man. And we started in the D man, nothing but integrity. This is Danny Legacy. I'm a D man. Music is my therapy all around the world. It's all about the charity, D man. And we started in the D man, nothing but integrity. This is Danny Legacy. Yeah, so come roll with me. I keep it real. That's how it's supposed to be. Hard puff. Now I'm moving. Hard sip. Backwards cruising. Yep, I'm not losing. Big business. No confusion. You can read the sign. Easy awareness by design. So if you got a catastrophic injury or developmental disability, not saying that it's meant to be, but it's not the end to get with me. Eric Thomas, believe me, I know what the time is. Never saying I can't because I can. And if you want to know why, because I'm a D man, D man. Music is my therapy all around the world. It's all about the charity, D man. And we started in the D man, nothing but integrity. This is Danny's legacy. Yeah. yeah so I came man. out and rolled out with that. It was beautiful. <laughs> and I was awesome, like, man. my diet feels like pretty much paralyzed. You know, yeah. so yeah, it was great. It was just like you used to do as you stop doing the stuff that you're doing. It's like no excuses at all, man. That's just like, I love that. When you start doing that, I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll take it away. So yeah. hey, it just, that's crazy, man. I love that, man. It's very inspirational. And um, I appreciate you sharing all that stuff, like sharing everything. Like you've done, you done a lot right here. And I, I, I really appreciate that. So leads me to I my like- next question. Since you, you know, you busted the flow on the mics, yeah. uh, <laughs> on the channel. Where can people follow you at? Uh, Google Eric Patrick Thomas. That'd be mm-hmm. first thing. And then the social media is Eric Patrick Thomas for Facebook and IG. And then Twitter is Eric P. Thomas. And then the Inspire is Inspire Shirt for mm-hmm. everything except Instagram. They made us do Inspire Shirt number one. Mm-hmm. And then if they want to go to the website, it's InspireShirt.com. Mm-hmm. Or um, I think the Etsy is... Is it Etsy Inspire or is it InspireEtsy.com? It's one of those ways. The same with Amazon. Amazon, our brand page on Amazon is Amazon.com slash Inspire Shirt. Because we do have a brand page on Amazon, which took which took a while. Like we have a trademark. And yeah. it took a while to get it. We had to go through our trademark attorney and then uh-huh. they emailed the trademark attorney. And it was just like, wow. But we got there though, man. We we got there, you know. We got there. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. No, man. Um, okay. Uh, any final thoughts before we uh, end this? 
Well, a couple of things that I always say is, you know, I live by never say can't, always say how. Mm-hmm. You know, when you say can, it kind of destroys it, it. It kills what you're trying to do. Yeah. You know, and the how, the how is building all the time where you sleep yeah. and you eat. You always are doing the how. Yeah. You just understand you're doing that. Like when you go somewhere, you're like, how are you going to get to point A to point B? You're going to go by car. You know, you're going to go by scooter, skateboard. You know, you're going to roll there. You're going to walk there. So always finding your how is is crucial because yeah. that's going to it's going to build. And it might not that answer may not happen overnight. It may take yeah. five years, maybe seventeen years. But if you really, really, really want it, you know, then say how. How can I make this happen? How can I do this? How can I do that? Write it down or type it out and then make some actionable goals, Mm -hmm. realistic actionable goals or steps to create, you know, to get that how. Yeah. All right. No, man. I just uh, just want to tell you thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. And then Eric's, all his information is going to be down below in the description. So check out all that. (laughs) <laughs> so uh yeah man i once again i appreciate you um coming on here taking the time out of your day yeah man thanks for having me peace out peace guys. out everybody <laughs>